Let me hand over the mic to Lona so that I can do an advanced uh, technique with uh, Professor Bobby shortly. Thank you. <coughs> so this is a typical move. Uh, it's called a wild punch. So I'm go we are going to go slow. He has hit me on the face with a knee break. So I'm going to go a little bit faster. <coughs> All right. Slowly again. So we break it one more time. So he sees my hand coming over to his head, hits me to the groin. That's a heel with a knee break. First, the last time. Um, that is just a simple technique for somebody who was uh, attacking you with uh, a wily punch. There are more. Uh, let's demonstrate one more technique for ladies that you can use to disrupt somebody who maybe wanted to do anything that is a bit harmful to you. If I wanted to do something wrong to this lady, Simple as that. Hold her. She pokes you. And then you are gone. Or you're done. As simple as that. That was quite simple as you could all see. And ladies, some of us always have this advantage, we have long nails. So yes. that's easy on your side. <coughs> before your wig goes, before your earring goes, before that nose ring goes, use your nails to help you. <laughs> yes, so nails here. Ni musuri, unawaza tumia nails. I have a question uh, also here. Somebody saying that unawaza tumia vipi na watu angeta, wanakwanga wakona mbao kwa mkono. Okay, uh, are you going to respond? It's okay. Yeah, let me respond a little bit and then you do it. Yes. Um, there are things that we need to understand before we even get to the ngeta stuff mm. or the choking. We call it a chok. Mm -hmm. uh, a chok happens normally in the dark or from behind. Two things happen. Number one, when you're walking, make sure whichever street, whichever place, you're walking through, there's nobody behind you, somebody that you do not know. Don't let somebody be close to you, always somebody that you do not know. Mm. Keep distance. That's the first principle in self-defense. Number two, at night, don't pass through a road that is never used by a lot of people. Mm. However, at times it happens that... Uh, Maybe uh, unconsciously you've taken a path or you've taken a road without thinking. Mm -hmm. The first thing that happens is that if you're being choked from behind and touch and tap, the first thing you need to do, number one, is to protect your apple, this part here. If you protect this, you'll struggle with the person, but you'll never be choked. So what you do, every time you hear a tap or a touch, turn your, your neck this way or this way to avoid the hand, the, the hand going to your apple. That's the first thing. The rest, my professor will explain. All right. Uh, I think ideally w what is going on is uh, we like what the uh, viewers asked. It's all about 
what he has said. You need to be consciously aware of your surrounding. Mm -hmm. That's key. Because majority of the time we just, we are, we are basically, like, I, I, I hate to use the word, but this is what I normally tell uh, my students. Don't walk like a zombie. <laughs> you know, be conscious <laughs> of where you are you, you're surrounding, where mm -hmm. you're walking to, you know. But now, because this is, this is a combination of uh, both mental and, and technical, so we can go through the process mm -hmm. of what happens if you get yourself in such a scenario. Mm -hmm. So let me, for this one, let me use uh, uh, Evans. So if he chokes me, and it, uh, ideally, majority of the populace, they are going to use their right hand. Yes. Uh, very rare you fight left-handed thugs. Eh? <laughs> So <laughs> he goes for it. This is my first initial reaction. Mm -hmm. I control his wrist and his uh, inner elbow. Press it down from there, and I can trap uh, the back, uh, his, his leg, uh, turn, flip him down. Okay? <laughs> so this technique can be done by even the ladies. So let me take Lona for this one. So she feels the hand moving in. She traps that. She does the same into there. And this is uh, like what Evans was talking about, is to prevent being choked. Mm. Because once your oxygen is locked, that's when people panic, OK? So this is what she needs to do. And put your elbow, uh, elbow down and tight. Now watch. Once she's in this position, yeah, it doesn't matter. Even if, even if I lift her up, are you okay? Yeah. I can't. Okay. Because of the... Yeah. She, she has become one compact. Mm -hmm. So what she is going to do... So you fall gently because of the mic. <laughs> yes. Oh. <laughs> so, so. so she's going to turn me this way. There. Ah, okay. All right. Wow. But again, um, it depends. Mm -hmm. When we talk of ourselves, and this is what we normally teach to the military staff, ours is so different and unique and fast. Yeah, I so wanted to choke, to choke him, it will take seconds. Because there is a difference between um, an aggressor, just a normal person on the street, and uh, a trained person. For us, mine is just a fraction of a second, and then you're done. So there's a very big difference between no, 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 no. a joke and... Uh, <laughs> discipline mm -hmm. and control. Yeah. <laughs> so, of course, many people are also asking um, where they can join. I like what you said about the reality is that you need a lot of commitment and discipline. So in case they wanted to reach out to, uh, to you, I know you do different, so maybe uh, you can tell us where you can find you and then... Yeah. Uh, so you can find me at... At Zaykwat, first of all, uh, I just completed my, my degree of human resource there, but I'd still be training there. And then I also freelance, so you can just um, get through me my number. I can give you my Facebook handle, but again, I don't do social media, which is very unlikely for a young person like me, but it takes a lot of time, which I really don't have. But at Facebook, it's uh, Njoki Dirango. But if you really need to find me, I can just give you my number because you won't find me on any social media platforms. I don't do social media. It's 0715-664-300. 0715-664-300. Strictly for that. And uh, you can also find me at Sarit Center. They are in a gym. That's where I usually train. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then just one, one more thing I wanted to say. You know, you need to realize if you're being strangled, why are you being strangled? You know, stop walking like a zombie. Most of us, you want to look cool when you're walking, you have your earphones, you have your headphones, you have your headphones. Someone is hooting at you with a gari, you have your headphones, you have your headphones, you know, these things that, it, this generation, we are blamed for so many things. And it's unfortunate to say that it's true. You know? You can't walk with earphones kama skiona unatembea na new siku una call sijui nani umesema matao hivi una call no you walk somewhere and you make that you just don't walk you know those things that small simple things and then you have to realize you cannot defend yourself against your phone being robbed mtu anakushikia kisu you need your life and then you're still struggling for a phone of 17000 
that really doesn't make sense. Stop and think. There's a difference between a common thief and a terrorist. A terrorist, it's unfortunately what we had uh, the case at the Westgate. That one, it's a do or die situation. There's a difference between self-defense and survival. Self-defense is just, it has, uh, we call it a legal frame. And you need to find out how it lies with our Kenyan law. So, you have 2,000 or 150 shillings and you're still struggling with the person at Akua. You know, that kind of thing doesn't really make sense. You can make another phone tomorrow, but you story Meisha. You know, so be realistic. You can always fight, but then we don't always fight. I've been in situations I've had to give my phone. And I've had Una Patia too. Why? Because I'd rather give my phone. Let me tell you, because you know martial arts or whatever it is, because you, you, you do, you think you know how to fight. It will not always end up as a clean fight. How pigan in a dummy. The person has feelings, the person reacts. Nakunam to Moga kama muizi. Na muizi, they do stupid things when they're afraid. Mm. That's why when you're told by the the right time for you to scream when a thief is in your house is not already wakati amesha kushika. It's when they're far away. When you start screaming and they're choking you. They finish the choke for you to keep quiet. Mm. You know, the small, simple things you need to know. Uh, so if it's your phone, all those small, petty things, patiana ishi skwingine, ngojia salary and month, nunua simu. If it's a Westgate situation, do or die situation, it's either you or them, you need to know the difference. Mm. So again, that's my number, only strictly business or sorry, center. I don't do social media. Thank all you. Right. 0715 <laughs> <laughs> Um, Willis, uh, there's something I did not say from yes, the initial right. state. Um, I was the first male guy to do the martial arts research initiative for experts oh. from Africa. Actually, we were the first group to do this thing in the world. Mm -hmm. So I'm working, I'm currently under the International Center of Martial Arts for youth development and engagement under the auspices of UNESCO. Mm -hmm. So I got an opportunity to go to Korea where she went after me to do that program. So right now, we are starting initiatives in, in Kenya. Uh -huh. And they're going to be going around Africa, whereby we'll be talking to the youth on matters discipline, but through martial arts philosophy. We want our youth to understand themselves. We want this story of uh, pregnancy and uh, burning you know, you know of schools mm, yes. to end yes. if we don't talk to these young ones we we'll love ourselves to blame we'll talk to them we'll talk to the parents because all this that is happening is because of the laxity from the parent side as i said laws that are passed on from generation yeah. to generation yeah. the parents of nowadays don't listen to their kids they don't take time to listen to their kids and talk to them this is what we are going to be doing to schools. And we hope, I think, uh, government officials are listening to us mm -hmm. so that they can give us support. And uh, whoever, whichever corporate uh, you know, uh, organization that is watching us, they can contact us so that we can work together to speak to these young ones. My number is 0733, or you can use 0723-225-162. On Facebook, you can... Google or uh, search Evans Omweri Oruru. You will find Oruru. Oruru. Mm. Oruru. Thank you so very much. Evans Oruru. And, oh, oh yeah, go ahead. <coughs> so, on where to find us? There are a lot of uh, martial arts centers in Nairobi. Personally, I train at Del Park Karate Club. It's along Mombasa Road, just opposite Excel Chemicals. So those who are staying along Mombasa Road, our main focus is dealing with kids from the slum. Just opposite Mombasa Road, we have Mukuru Kwanjenga slums and Mukuru Kwa Ruben. Mm. These kids, we have a lot of them at the club. Actually, we had like three who had stopped going to school and right now as we speak, they're going back to school. We have two who just did their KCPE. So those who are staying along Mombasa Road, you have Deal Park Karate Club. You won't spend a coin when you're training there. You just show up and let things happen. So in Madare, there's also another club. In Kibera, there's a club. The main focus is to dig deep into the slums because this is where our youths are going. Yeah. Crime rate is high, prostitution is high, drug abuse is high. 
So if we don't help these kids right now, it's going to be bad. Parents send kids to school, yes. They don't talk about some things, hoping the teachers will talk about these things. The teachers return these kids back home, hoping the parents will talk about these things. So we end up not talking about these things anymore. We no longer talk about sex to our kids. We no longer talk about drugs to our kids. So if the parents and the teachers are not helping these kids, then who will? Uh -huh. That is why we have this group here. My Facebook page is Lona Abiero. <laughs> it's fully martial arts stuff. So if you have any questions, if you have questions concerning where you want to train, just let me know. Almost all towns in Kenya, we have centers. So if you are in Nakuru, Eldoret, Naivasha, Busia, Kisumu, Mombasa, we can always help. Just hit my page and I'll tell you where to train at. I'll help you connect with an instructor. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. We have the mic and there's some questions here that have, uh, have come. Somebody saying, I am almost hitting 30 years. Am I too late to start doing martial arts? That's Telford Aduda or Aduda Rangala. <laughs> That's a beautiful question. Yeah. It's only in Africa where people start getting old immediately, they get married. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you marry today, the following day, you are like, those are things that I used to do when I was a boy. <laughs> um, I can answer that to my friend. Yes, Telford Aduda. 61-year-old guy from Premier Gym was training Kempo, and he's wow. very good at it, and up to date is training, 61-year-old. So training has no age limit. Mm. It will depend on what you've decided yourself from your mind and your, your heart. Mm. If you have passion for it, please do it as fast as yesterday. Uh, Thank you. All right. And I think uh, mm -hmm. to just to add on what he's saying, you know, it depends on how you look at the number. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you mean by saying you are 30, 30 something? 30 years. I'm yes. almost 30. For, for, uh, for me, I'm 43 years wow. and, and moving on. And I don't see a scenario where I'm thinking of quitting yet, you know. And it's like what Mr. Evans is talking about. You know, we, we, whenever somebody talks about age, to me, I, I tend to, you know, um, wonder mm -hmm. because it's, it's an issue of fear. Mm -hmm. There's something that you, you feel like you want to do, but what's stopping you? Mm -hmm. you know, that's the question you should ask yourself. Mm -hmm. And the reason as to why the uh, majority of people are a little bit biased, uh, you know, going into martial arts at you know, uh, a certain age, mm -hmm. is simply because of the same thing we have just mentioned here. It's about the type of school you are going to. Because we have so many other schools which are teaching um, older people older people mm -hmm. and we understand how to deal with older people the way you train older people uh, it's, it's not the same mm -hmm. as the way you are going to teach kids so it's only until you get the right uh, information then you understand that it's all about the training is so safe mm -hmm. yeah and then you also have Clarence here uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. I will talk about what professor has just said what is stopping you? When I was joining karate um, four years back, I started at Kisumu Polytechnic. I had a lot of stereotypic statements like, why are you joining karate? Do you want to fight with men? You're becoming <laughs> uncontrollable. No, that wasn't it. I didn't want to fight with men. I just wanted to find myself. And I'm glad that I did. So. The, the society is stereotypic. Most of the poor picture like karate is not for the female mm. because people think that our place is the kitchen. No, our place is not the kitchen. We are out here to compete and I'm not a feminist. So <laughs> when you decide to close your ears to stereotypic statements, then you will go far you'll keep on hearing negative statements. So just filter. If it's positive, take it in. If it's negative, garbage in, garbage out. I'm 28 years old, and I don't picture living karate anytime soon because it's like a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So the 30-year-old, you're too young to start. Too, too young. young. So welcome <laughs> to the club. Clarence, 
Clarence or at loons underscore a underscore i says, says ask Maureen why Krav, Maga and Shotokan combination. Um, <clears throat> thank you for the question. Um, you know, and so many people, there's this, do I call it a stereotype? Mama? When you join martial arts, let me open up and say currently actually, I've been doing uh, Shotokan for, for how many years? I think seven and then until this year I started doing Krav Maga. Mm -hmm. I haven't left Shotokan. This is the point. And I'm also speaking to all the others who do karate out there, plus everybody else. Don't stick. When you close your mind to learning, there is one problem. Uh, I, I don't remember who said this quote, but Alisema, when you want to hide something to Africans, put it in a book. Put it in a book. <laughs> Basically, how to earn millions. Whoever buys those books, now no. Napata Munyanaziza just sit there. How to become successful, how to, you know, mm -hmm. we don't want to learn. On Africa age, most of our parents don't learn from us, and I have the greatest parents in the whole world. Shout out to my mom and dad, they're watching. <laughs> they are the greatest parents in this world. My dad literally said, I pray in our house. When I'm speaking about anything, my dad is <laughs> because he calls me his angel because he knows he learns. And this is the point. When you're doing this profession, or let, let me rather speak about karate. Since you can zakusoma, there's this thought of no, you can't learn from anybody else. When do not jua? We have shotokan eight years of black belt. When do not jua? Let me tell you, I, I I've done shotokan for seven years, and then about six months ago, I met my sensei. My um, I told you the different styles. This is shotokan, and then I met Vincent Baraya sensei. He was doing he's doing koryuchinadi. Now koryuchinadi is basically a karate that accepts and does almost all street. It's very, it's more practical than this. Shotokan and all the other styles go to, have a tendency to lean towards sport mm -hmm. karate. And then this it has a tendency to lean towards street. And I met him and I walked into class the first day and I felt like by then he lit to a belt. This is the first time I'm wearing this, my brown belt ever since this year. I don't wear this belt when I go to class. I don't even wear my gi. I wear a tracksuit. Because I landed in that class and I felt like sick when I join anything. So I live with a kid and I can't go to learn. I don't wear my gi in class, by the way. You go this, because I, I went there and I told him, Sensei, if you told me a punch, this is how we fold a punch. Basically one, two, three, and then you place your finger there. But if you tell me this is not how we fold a punch from today, I'll stop. <laughs> After seven years of one, learning. Two, three. It's so easy. This is just a one, two, and then you thumb there, you tuck it there, and then you're safe. Most of us, <laughs> it, it is so easy. <laughs> so I went to class and I told him, okay, but this is not how we fold a punch. I will stop today. You have to accept that you have to keep learning. What I'm going to do in 30 years, 40 years, those who are in a national team, and you don't want to learn Kitwing. In fact, when you're not in fact, the point is in Akwanga. You actually feel threatened when you come and find, I'm, I'm from Shotokan, he's from Kenpo, and he has a black belt. He knows a little bit more than I do. So I'm kind of feeling threatened. One, because maybe if we are actually teaching and we are using this as a, a, a means of earning, he's at a better position than I am. Two, because he has a black belt. Mm. So I'm feeling threatened. So most of the time, we don't want to learn from these other arts. Now, I realize, let, let me tell you, let me, let me just call them fighting arts. So it is one big thing. Talk up in the class, at Taekwondo, learn how they kick. Mm -hmm. Because we might be teaching the to karate, but we all know Taekwondo is the art for kicking. So definitely, they do have better kicks right. than us. Mm -hmm. Go learn in that class. Mm -hmm. Talk up in the Krav Maga. Those are the pe best people in street self-defense. Why? It's the Israeli, actually, it's what the martial arts of um, Israeli special forces, that's what they practice. Go learn. The problem with us is ukijwa kidogo, autaki kongezewa, and ku feel threatened. So that was my reason. And I will continue learning. Mm -hmm. This is not where I stop. Krav Maga ni this year, probably next year, I'll start taekwondo classes. Be willing to learn. But they, I had two goals this year when I started. People have a list of 10 regulations in when you start in January. I just had two. Number one, to be the person who knows the least in the room. If you find yourself in a room of 10 people, now when do you not when do you My friend, you are in the wrong room. <laughs> and that's not actually something to be proud of. Uh. It's not something to be proud of. room, Nati, when do you not when do you No. It means you're always giving and you're not getting. You're always giving. So you're always giving. You're empty. Who is giving you? Who are you? What are you learning from? Nothing. Yeah. 
No, no. Oh. So you give. <laughs> All right. You, you also get. Thank okay. You. All right. And uh, did you say we can find you? I think the Af uh, actually, uh, once uh, you find him, <laughs> you got me. Um, Where do you but, guys, but uh, generally, we, we like uh, what Lona said. We we also have so many uh, clubs around. Yeah. Um, they actually, I think we are probably over 30, 40, and the mm -hmm. number is still growing uh, from Mombasa, mm -hmm. Trukana. Mm -hmm. So we are all uh, around. All you just need to do is just go to the social media. Uh, and just Google uh, African Kempo Federation, you should be able to find us. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, we want to say thank you so much. I know we're supposed to do one more, but uh, because of time, we'll end it there. Right. Uh, yeah. You have a final comment. Aye. The final comment, which uh, cuts across everywhere, all sports, even in class, even in academics, your glass should always be half empty, not full. When it's full, you will never learn. Put your glass always half so that you have room to learn more yes also um there is a tournament next year it's called nairobi opens karate championships organized when, when by it? metropolitan region it's on february 16th and 17th 2019th at kasarani this is a tournament which cuts across all ages kids juniors cadets and even veterans so all the karatekas who had hung their boots please take Come your gi come for training <laughs> then come for this tournament yes thank you all right so make sure that uh, you go ahead and uh, uh, do that prepare for february it's going to be great yes. uh, so i'd like to say thank you guys so much for coming for sharing most importantly i believe the people who are watching have also left with a few nuggets of wisdom uh, to change their lives karate see when we have vita pakiake it's discipline and control yeah. that's at least i've learned uh, today <laughs> so i might start start like any mimi ninahitaji hiyo discipline ongeze yesu kwa sababu mimi nikisha learn sitashikika imta but thank you guys so much you can find kenpo federation and find them as well and of course we're going to take a picture if in case ushindwe kabisa and up kwa instagram ni dm ama twitter ni dm hook up now ama mkuje smart gyms junction second uh, second floor utapata loan and and you can get you know more information uh, on that so santen sana